So as you saw from that cool video, we are doing detox. And today we are doing detox your soul. Interesting topic. I wonder if you've ever been to a preach where they've preached on detoxing your soul. I certainly haven't. Two weeks ago, I was watching episode four of season one of The Chosen, and it's the scene where Jesus says to Simon, follow me. And I was filled with elation, with joy, with awe, with wonder at such a holy God who shows such tender mercy. A week ago, I was grumpy. I was, life is so mundane, it's so boring, you know, little box, we get up, we do the same thing every single day. You know, you go, you get up, you have your breakfast, you do your work, you know, and you cook the dinner and you go to bed. It's the same stuff every single day. Hey, mundane, boring. Where? Two extreme emotions. Where do they come from? From our souls. From our souls. What is a soul? What is a soul? Very difficult to define. But it's the essential me. The thing that makes Laney Curran, that is my soul. Scientists have done amazing steps forward. We've analyzed, we've dissected, we've measured, we've counted, and we know so much now about the body that we didn't know a long time ago. And we're going to learn more and more and more, I really do believe. My son is a chemical pathologist, and he's always doing And he works with chemicals. And he would be probably tell me, say, well, when you're feeling happy, this little thing is doing that, and this is doing this, and this is moving here. And if you're feeling grumpy, this is doing that. He can tell me how. He can tell me how many chemicals. He can't tell me why. <laughs> he cannot tell me why. We can't say why. I challenge you. To be able to, you might say, well, you were tired in that, but you still can't explain why. The real nitty gritty. So we need to think about our spirits and our souls. The Bible's full of it. Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Now, can I just say before, heart, spirit, soul. Because the Hebrew language is so flamboyant and exciting. To translate one Hebrew word into an English word is often very challenging. So sometimes when it's heart, it's soul, and sometimes when it's heart, it's spirit. So read it in context. So here he's saying, you shall love the Lord your God with all your spirit, and with all your soul, and with all your might. Spirit, soul, and body. See that? I've got a simple picture. I'm a mathematician, as some of you know, so you're getting Venn diagrams today. So the simple way that I see ourselves is like that when we're born. We have a body which grows, hopefully not too much this way. We have a spirit. Now you can see I've drawn a little very skinny little pretty pathetic spirit. Because when we're born again, when we are born flesh, we have a spirit. But it's pretty minimal. It's pretty dead. And it remains that way until we are born again. Jesus said to Nicodemus, flesh gives flesh, spirit yields spirit. So the next picture shows someone who's born again. And the spirit has grown. And that's, we grow our spirits. And can you see the soul is there? It's a combination. The, the detox series that we're doing, the very first one spoke to your future, your spirit. And remember we spoke about Make Jesus your goal. Strive to be like Jesus. Last week, we spoke about the body. This week, we're speaking about the soul. But the soul is, is a complex thing. It's got will. It's got emotions. It's got mind. I'm focusing on emotions. And I did this one just for fun. One day. One day. Go, Mita. One day, we are in heaven. We have this heavenly body. It's amazing. Our spirit is like lightning. It's like we see Jesus. There's no more need for faith. Our soul is still there. We need to work on our souls. We need to focus on our souls. They need attention. 
John Ortberg, in his book, Soul Keeping, tells a lovely story. I shall briefly tell it. He talks about a river. It's just a story. This beautiful river flowing through a village. It's the life of the village. The people, the children play there. They have picnics there. The swans are there. The fish are there. It's glorious. Birds are there. It's such a wonderful place to be. But way up high is the spring keeper. And what the spring keeper does is he make, clears the spring. He makes sure there's no debris, there's no leaves, there's no dead birds, there's no junk coming down the river. And he does that. Powers that be in the village decide, well, we can't see what this spring keeper's doing. Uh, let's just tell him he doesn't need to work anymore. We don't need him. We've got our river. We're all good. So he, he, they tell him to go. In time, brackish water starts coming down. The water gets staler and staler. The spring gets blocked. The swans leave, the fish die, the river stinks. It's no longer the life of the village. What's that got to do with me? Nice story, Lanny. The river is what everyone sees in you. The spring is your soul. You are the soul keeper. It's the unseen work that happens at the spring, that happens with your soul, that people will see in our day-to-day -day interactions. Me again. This week's been horrendous, stretched in every area. Busy, 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 personal stretches, all sorts of things. Sick dog, etc., etc. I don't want to tell the detail. You can ask me if you, if you want to know. By Friday, I was irritated, grumpy, didn't like anybody, talked to me nicely or else, <laughs> and I had to stop. Lainey, and you could say, what, well, Lainey, you'd had a busy week, you were tired. Yeah, but guys, there's more than that. I had neglected my soul. I had to say to myself, what are the real issues here, Lainey? What are the real issues? Why are you like this? Long story, but I can tell you the answer, simple answer. I was feeling sorry for myself. Shame, poor Lainey. Given, given, given the whole week, and no one had given her any attention. My soul needed attention. My soul needed attention. Proverbs 4 verse 23 says, Keep your soul, heart word there, keep your soul with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. This is not just my idea. This is God's idea. Watch your soul. The springs of life flow from it. So four questions. Am I regularly reflecting on the health of my soul? Are you regularly reflecting on the health of your soul? I guess most of us will probably say, mm, not really. We check our grocery cupboards every day. Well, not every day, once a week or whatever, once a month, and we buy what we need to buy. We men, you and women, you check your car and you make sure it's got oil and tire pressure on a regular basis, I hope, because otherwise it's going to have a problem. In the, if you don't check the grocery cupboard, you're going to run out and everyone's going to be saying there's no food. What's going on? Just as I have responsibility and I can't rely on anyone else, you you, put your name there. Lainey, I have responsibility for my soul and no one else can do it for me. No one. I have to do it for myself. So how do we do this? We talk to God about our souls. David was an incredible soul keeper. When you read his Psalms, he's so honest on his emotions. And what does he do every time he has these emotions? Where did he always go? Sad, happy, discouraged, depressed, he went to his heavenly father. Many psalms, but I'm just going to read one to you. Psalm 62, verse 8. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart, pour out your soul before him. God is a refuge for us. Jonathan Edwards says, There is no love so great, so wonderful, as that which is the heart of Christ. You need to talk to somebody. Talk to your Father. Talk to your Heavenly Father. 
We need sound doctrine. We need to be obedient. We need the ability to endure suffering, but we need to feel the love of God. And Jesus, only Jesus has that unconditional love. How do I know? He died. He went to the point of death. God went to the point of death. He loves me and you, everyone, more than we can imagine. Imagine this person who wants to talk to us. Take your soul to God. Sorry, yeah, that's what, take your God, take God to your soul. Talk to your soul about God. Talk to it. Laney, what's wrong with you? Ah, oh, shame, you're feeling sorry for yourself again. David shows us how it's done. He said in Psalm 42 and 43, many times it says this phrase. I've just picked out verse 5. Why are you cast down, my soul? Ask yourself, why? Why are you feeling like you do? Why? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Tell my soul, soul, we sang about it. This is who Jesus is. These are his promises. This is what he's done. Tell your soul, remind your soul over and over and over again because the world and the media and all that stuff is telling everything else. You know who we, I think today, especially young people, and if you've got teenagers, you've got to help them through this, who's speaking to their soul? Everybody else. The social media is speaking to their soul and telling them lies about themselves. So how do I reflect? I don't want to, we'd spend ages on this, but we, we, take, we talk to God about our souls. We talk to our souls about God. But what do I say? Hello, God. <laughs> so just a bit of a framework that Gordon MacDonald gives. And again, you're going to get a lovely Venn diagram. And he suggests when you look at the inner you, when you look at your soul, there's four areas. And this pretty much sums up memories, imagination, intent, and our relationships, connections. So memories are the past. Do you get random memories all the time? I hope you do, because I do, otherwise I'm something wrong with me. The weirdest things will pop into your head, and I guess I've got a few years on many of you, some are more than me, but <laughs> the more memory more you get, the more memories you get, hey? You've got this thing of nature and nurture. We've all heard that. Nature's who I am because of my genes and da 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 But the way I've been brought up, the way that circumstances that I've faced, experiences that I've had, affect me, make me who I am. And we need to process those memories through a lens of God. Generally speaking, you could categorize memories in three ways, painful, neutral, or positive. What do you do with the painful ones? I reckon most of us generally do one of two things. We either go, no, not going to think about that. Uh, 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 too sore. Mm -mm, not going there. Or it goes round and round and round and round. And it's just painful and it just gets worse and you go lower and lower. Don't ignore your painful memories. Bring them to God. Yeah. Unpack them with God. Let Him shine light and life, and restoration, and peace, and healing into that memory. The positive ones, they're good. I love, as I say, the Psalms are amazing for soul. Psalm 77 verse 11 says, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. My whole life is a result of what God's done. He's brought people and circumstances into my life. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. Thank God for the positive things. I thank God for my parents. I thank God. I, there's so many things we can thank, for, thank God for in our past. The imagination. What does the future hold? Ha <laughs> ha, we've just had load shedding, Laney. Have you not seen the economic situation? I'm out of here. This guy, uh, the, anywhere you're going to go. Oh, the, oh, 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 oh. What's the future got for my children? What's the future got? Ephesians 3 verse 20. Now. To him who is able to do far more abundantly 
than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. God has my future. God has your future. It is secure and it is good. The stream, let him paint the future. Let him give you the colors. Remembering who was the stream for? Who's your life for? The village. It's not for us. We keep our streams clear. We care for our souls so that we have more and more and more to give to others. Intentions, just going to mention it's the now. If I'm sorting out my memories and I've given God my future and I'm dealing with my soul, what to do now will be really easy. <laughs> Connections, people. We, that's a detox, not next week. Detox your mind. The week after that, de detox your friendships. We're going to talk about connections. Next to God, the most important, there are important people who are affecting your soul. Who are you spending time with? Who are you sharing stuff with? We need people who fill our soul, who refresh our soul. It's vital, our friendships. Don't miss that one. Two weeks' time. What stops me? I need to, am I reflecting on my soul? How do I do it? What stops me? Come on, lady. This is so airy fairy, totally unnecessary. I'm flesh and blood. Get on with it. Will you stop so I can please go home now? I suggest it's very necessary. We're not in the habit of it. We we neglect it. We just we're so busy, we're doing everything else that we don't set aside time for your soul. Do you set it? Is it is it something in your head? I love walking. I must say, I battled through preparation yesterday. I was still dealing with my soul. It wasn't restored. I kept on saying, Lord, help me. Help me here. Help me here to, be, to say what you want to say and those sort of things. Then last night I sat and watched season seven. I'm sorry, but I'm loving Chosen. I wept and I just sat there. It's where Nicodemus, I won't give it, you must watch it because it's just, I just wept and wept and wept. And I said, Thank you, Jesus, for restoring my soul. Jesus withdrew all the time. He could not do his public life without withdrawing. And sometimes we think, well, he just went to pray. Yes, but remember praying, that's part of the whole thing of restoring your soul. If he had to do it, and he had the greatest mission on earth, minor thing of saving everyone. If he had to do it, how much more you or me? And then I want to talk about Mary and Martha very briefly. I know you, I'm, I'm sorry, but I just feel so much of this, you, I really want you to hear. Luke 10. I won't, I won't read it, um, Camisa, I'll just tell you. So Mary and Martha, it's always irritated me, this piece of scripture. Really irritated me. <laughs> because there's Martha. Generous Martha says, Jesus, come to our home. Her lazy, blimmin' sister sits doing nothing. Well, I'm, she's slaving away in the kitchen. I can so relate to Martha. <laughs> and Jesus, and, and she's all distracted. I have to read this part. And he, she says, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve all alone? Tell her then to help me. Come on, Lord, tell her. Lord answered her, Martha, Martha. Oh, laney, laney. <laughs> you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. Now, I always thought he was moaning at her because she was working. Mm -mm. Notice what he says to her. You are anxious and troubled about many things. If Mary had been sitting there at Jesus' feet, thinking about everything, got to do that, then I must do that, and tomorrow I mustn't forget, not listening to Jesus, like maybe you're not listening to me right now, or to God. <laughs> Everything else, no, I keep, keep, stop talking, woman. Or Ma Martha could have been in the kitchen doing her stuff, but focused, not distracted. Are you distracted? 
in whatever you're doing, are you getting me? Are you distracted? It doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter that I'm busy or not busy, but am I distracted? Be in the present. Be engaged with God. Let him speak to your soul all the time. Finally, what's God been urging me to change? He's always speaking, always, through something that happens in our lives, through a movie, any movie, through a friend, through his word, directly by his Holy Spirit. He's always speaking, and he's always nudging us. He wants to make us healthier people. He wants us to have healthier souls. Don't neglect what he nudges you to do. Don't neglect it. Because he, he keeps on. I know that. <laughs> he will keep on. Don't neglect it. Psalm 23, that famous psalm. God say, It says, the good shepherd, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God is always playing his role. Always. Are we listening? Are we responding? Our text, our main text, Hebrews, 1 and, Hebrews 12 verse 1 and 2 verse 2 says looking to Jesus looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith who for the joy his soul was so good because for the joy that was set before him he enjoyed the cross despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God Jesus was a man of emotions. He was a man in every way. Hebrews later on tells us he was a man in every single way like you and I. He felt, he felt, but his God, he had a perfectly godly emotional life. What is that? Balanced, in control in proportion to the circumstances, but intensely feeling. Intensely feeling. And as I spoke earlier, that love, the love that poured out on the cross was intense, and it's the same love today. He is loving on you. He wants you to be re-enchanted or for the first time enchanted by Jesus. Pay attention to our souls. Pay attention to our souls. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us for our online church service. If you would like to find out more about us, check out our website, Facebook or Instagram page. Also be sure to follow us to keep in the loop with our upcoming events. If you would like to get into what God is doing through Hope City Church, here are our banking details. And if you've joined us for the first time, please contact us via email or WhatsApp. We would love to hear from you. Have a blessed week and be sure to join us again next Sunday.